हेलो गाइस वेलकम वेलकम टू माय चैनल रॉकेट ज्ञान टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू विटनेस द हिस्टोरिक लॉन्च टू द इंटरनेशनल स्पेस स्टेशन एंड यस विल विटनेस वन हिस्टोरिक लॉन्च सो लेट्स गेट जस्ट लेट्स जस्ट ड्रम जंप इट विद सो गाइस so let's just first uh, uh, know about the launch vehicle which is soyuz 2.1a okay so let's just have a look at it once so here's we are here we have the launch vehicle and as you can see there uh, uh, it has three stages first of all three stages uh, one first stage is the four strap on boosters as you can see This is a very unique shape, which is uh, like copyrighted to only uh, Russia. Okay, and this, this is, these are the first stage. If I zoom it in, then here you can see, here you can see uh, this, the first stage, the four strap-on boosters, right? Yeah, the four strap-on boosters. They are powered by RD one o seven A engines. Okay, and uh, they have a like you can see the shape of it. The boosters always have a round shape, cylindrical shape. But in Russia only, and uh, there we have this uh, tapered shape, and it is very good. So yeah, the, these are the first stage. The second stage we have the central core. This is the central core we have. If I open it up. and you can see that uh, this this these the rocket designs are very unique to russia only you will find very less similar this less similar to this in nasa or any other uh, country because they use this the combustion chambers and the vernier engines okay which are not used by anyone any one else that's the thing so This stage stage normally burns for 280 286 seconds, and uh, yeah. So this is the thing. Also, also guys, as it, do you hear me, guys? Okay, 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 okay. Now it's good. So let me just tell you what will happen today. Okay. So these were these are the first three strap-on boosters. Four, sorry, four strap-on boosters. You can see. Four strap-on boosters. You can see. Um, more down. Okay, cool. <laughs> I have just ignored it now. Okay, cool. So, uh, yeah, the the, the strap-on boosters. Uh huh. Now, now we have the third stage. Now we can see the third stage now. This is the third stage. Basically, the in the fairing actually this payload will not be there uh and in uh, payload will not be there and uh, here you will see the soyuz capsule which will go and dock with the international space station okay so uh, i didn't find any better image of this so uh, i have this ariane space website in front of me and they have this beautiful description of the soyuz 2.1a vehicle and there they use it to launch the satellite that's where they are uh, we, they as we can see the payload here but in reality today we will have the soyuz capsule here okay so okay good so in the third stage if we zoom into it and uh, we can see this thing okay so we have the upgraded rd0124 engine here 
and uh, the Soyuz STL launcher uses RD0110 engine in its third stage while the Soyuz STB so STB launcher and STL launcher they both use different configuration and uh, the main thing is the uh, in um, historic time uh, earlier the Soyuz capsule the Russian agency uses mechanical systems okay for the rocket flight and all but now they have integrated digital control systems in the third stage so that they can guide the vehicle more precisely and more accurately and uh, here you can see the central core is doing a great job Malab, it will do a great job central core now this is the third stage okay. this is the third stage sorry my bad okay so guys if you haven't liked the stream and subscribe to my channel please subscribe it here you will find more the more launches and more uh, videos related to space and science and uh, so now we can have a laya so we are waiting for the coverage from the nasa and we'll shortly have it and uh, you will be able to see it so until then what we can do is i can i i have one more thing in my mind we can have a look at this yeah so the lift of time is around this as you can see mission and what it is a progress ms14 so basically it is a cargo resupply mission to the international space station many of you must be wondering what is this international space station international space station is nothing but a a place where astronauts do research and other activities uh, so that they can uh, like uh, in the in space uh, there is a different environment right from the earth they have microgravity no atmosphere and all that thing so there the space the science which we get from there is different what we get uh, in on earth uh, for example there is one thing called uh, um, I remember correctly there was one fiber optic cable thing which can be developed only in uh, microgravity not a in here earth so that's the opportunity what they are looking for okay they are looking for that and uh, yeah so here we have the rocket is soyuz 2.1a okay we have the launch we'll we'll have we have the live coverage so i must stop my uh, voice and you see the live coverage yeah it's the coolest place So these were the three astro uh, you can uh, do you hear me you hear the audio Okay, okay, cool.
Central Time, 9.51 and 41 seconds Eastern Time, the uh, International Space Station actually will pass directly over the Baikonur Cosmodrome 41 seconds after launch and will leapfrog past uh, the Progress, uh, which will then uh, be in a catch-up mode for its two-orbit rendezvous uh, after a yes. program so series of rendezvous, firings okay. to not only raise uh, the Progress's orbit to match that of the International Space Station, but to fine-tune its path to the International Outpost. It will take uh, 8 minutes and 46 seconds from the time of launch uh, until the Progress separates from the third stage of its Soyuz booster and uh, begins uh, to uh, deploy its solar arrays and navigational antennas for the chase to catch up to the International Space Station. So here he explained actually the process which will happen here uh, the in the live stream you can see right now the control station from Russia the rocket as you can see there will be must be on board the astronauts uh, sorry the astronauts I'm saying the resupply mission basically the resupply mission consists of various medicines cargo as mentioned, uh, tonight's launch of the progress uh, resupply ship from site 31 of the Baikonur Cosmodrome coming off the same launch pad guys that, uh, Chris like Chris it if you haven't liked it and subscribe and it Wagner for more launched off of uh, just two weeks ago for their four orbit rendezvous to reach the International Space Station and the start of a six and a half month mission on the orbital outpost uh, we are just one week past the time that uh, the departing Expedition 62 crew, that uh, was Alex Grapochka and NASA astronauts Andrew Morgan and Jessica Mir, returned home uh, for a landing on the steppe of Kazakhstan. Uh, they're back at their respective uh, locations in Star City, Russia, and here in Houston, uh, undergoing uh, post-flight debriefings. So guys, actually what exactly will happen, I'll tell you, okay. So guys, first of all, the uh, Soyuz 2.1A booster clearly, and no? its uh, progress uh, resupply ship encapsulated in its upper stage rolled out uh, to clearly. the launch pad a short distance uh, on Wednesday morning, uh, just after 7 a.m. Uh, Baikonur time. Uh, you can see uh, on the uh, upper stage of the uh, Soyuz booster, uh, so the logo the 75, the uh, that the uh, is representative of the fact here, that this, this launch the of the 75th stage, Progress this is, the is coming on the, the 75th the anniversary of the day that Soviet and American troops met at the Elbe River near Torgau in Germany, okay. marking an important step toward the end of World War II in Europe. Marking that moment in history, the Soyuz booster is decorated today with memorial logos as it sits on the launch pad fully fueled at Site-31 oh, Roscosmos. Okay. The Russian Federal Space Agency is calling this vehicle the Victory Rocket. That rollout uh, took uh, less than 40 minutes uh, from uh, the time it left uh, the integration building at Site-31 until the time it was uh, raised vertically on its launch pad, allowing launch pad technicians to hook up uh, so electrical uh, cables and data cables to this set is, the stage for launch, see, like which NASA is scheduled just 15 minutes from now. To the, uh, launch side using a rocket crawler, but uh, here it is first uh, laid down uh, transported to the launch site and then it is uh, laid up and then it is laid up so uh, so guys ha huh? so at the time of launch uh, okay. the international space station will be uh, flying about uh, 260 miles above the earth crossing the border between Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan, 329 statute miles behind the Soyuz booster. And as mentioned, it will leapfrog past the uh, Progress and the Soyuz, uh, enabling the Progress to begin its uh, trek to catch up to the station, just two orbits or just over three hours after launch. Yep. So guys, the thing which he mentioned, what will happen and all, I'll if possible i'll do a quick uh, what you say the one animation from the kerbal space program what actually will happen and all the uh, sequence of events uh, following that, launch calls for the uh, soyuz's first stage separation to occur just one minute 58 seconds after launch the launch shroud jettison uh, will come uh, at about the three minute three second mark that uh, will 
uh, be the precursor to second stage shutdown at four minutes and 37 Four seconds yeah. and second stage Single separation days. 10 seconds yes. later. The third stage skirt jettisoning will occur 10 seconds after that at just under the five minute mark and third stage shutdown and orbital insertion will come at the eight minute 46 second mark. Spacecraft separation just seconds after that setting the stage for the solar array deployment and navigational antenna deployment on the progress as it begins its journey to reach the International Space Station and to docking at 12.12 a.m. Central Time, 1.12 a.m. Eastern Time, so Saturday morning. Guys, there, it is a very long stream. It, it, would be a, it will be a very long stream if I show you the docking part and the, yeah, and the, dock, the docking part. So I'll here cover the launch part only today. And the docking part, uh, if you want, I can have the video of it in a uh, speed up mode because actually that would be very boring. If I do that, now that would be very very boring. It is so slow. It is not in so not at all interesting. So what I am thinking is I will end the stream after the launch and the docking part. I will upload the video on my channel. So if you haven't subscribed it till now, hit the subscribe button right now and uh, here actually on my channel you will find different different videos about space science rockets and all you can check it uh, the you can check my channel also for different uh, views and different videos so subscribe it for the docking part if you want to see the docking part so yeah this so this 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 is the ground trace plotter so actually what will happen as you can see this these lines are the uh, the are the trace of the iss so these line represent where from from where the iss is going so when the so when is the launch window for the mission actually the launch window is when uh, the iss is just overhead that launch site okay and it will be at uh, that time when they will be launching so that's the launch window the whole that's the whole science actually uh, behind it what will happen how it will be managed that's a whole what we say the branch of science the space missions and design if you want to want me to talk more about it tell me and i'll do that do that right now we don't have much thing so uh, should i do a kerbal space program animation right now because the launch will be at 7 21 am now it's 10 minutes only so let's wait and watch that would be better uh yeah so what i was doing previously i should do right now till they... this is mission control houston coming okay. up on the 10 and a half minute mark before launch So guys, uh, ha, yeah, I was telling about this, the launch sequence and what will happen actually. Countdown preparations uh, are continuing uh, at the uh, Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan as we approach the 10 minute mark until launch. So you must be wondering what is this all about countdown? Is this, is these are just the number or what? These are not just the numbers. Basically the countdown begins uh, roughly before the before the launch and roughly one hour before the launch and uh, that is very necessary actually there are several and so many checks which needs to be done before a rocket launch so that the once the progress uh, reaches its preliminary orbit uh, a series of uh, pre-programmed engine firings will be conducted uh, to uh, place the progress yeah. on a uh, pinpoint path to the international space station the uh, so-called automated rendezvous sequence is uh, scheduled to begin just before 10 p.m. Central Time tonight. That will uh, enable the progress to arrive in the vicinity of the International Space Station for a fly-around maneuver. 
that uh, will precisely align the forward docking probe on the Progress vehicle to the aft port of the Zvezda service module to which the Progress will link up to just after midnight central time Saturday morning. Yep. Uh, so, uh, the, I was talking about the countdown timer, so it uh, basically per has to perform so many checks and therefore this is this countdown timer is there. It's not like just put on the key or crank the engine and you are ready to go, no. It's not like that. There are so many checks which needs to be performed. And the best example is the SpaceX failure at T minus zero second, which happened. I have made covered that vid video in my channel. You can check that out after this launch. Uh, basically at zero second, the launch was aborted because there was something wrong with the engines. What wrong, what went wrong, what exactly what was there, I have covered in my channel. You can watch it. So. Yeah, the main part is, okay, so what will I do is after the Readiness launch, reports uh, from the blockhouse at the Baikonur Cosmodrome the indicate happen. that everything is uh, in good shape inside eight minutes from now. the Kerbal Space Program video, okay, that would be better. At the seven minute mark, a uh, key is inserted into a uh, start mechanism and then the key is rotated, uh, transitioning uh, the vehicle, the Soyuz 2.1A booster, to an automatic mode. It's essentially equivalent uh, to a ground launch sequencer. Okay, so this is the this is the thing which is hap uh, happening because of the countdown. These are the sequences which is uh, uh, which are related, which are happening because of the countdown. So actually, if I, so fun fact, be, before the digital computers took over the rocket sequences, rocket uh, launching, mechanical computer did not have that much power. So what Russia did at the, in the back time, in the 90s, 70s, 60s, they actually rotated the launch pad to rotate the vehicle. If they wanted to go to the north, south, or whichever direction they wanted the rocket to point, they rocket they, instead of rotating the rocket after the launch, they rotated the launch pad so that they don't have to have the computerized system to rotate the rocket. That was a fun fact, which now they don't do because of the digital computers they fit inside the third stage. The report uh, from Baikonur is that the Progress vehicle is now on autonomous power as we uh, approach the six minute mark until launch. So you, some one more thing you must be wondering about these people what they what is the role of these people so there they you you must be thinking they are just uh, looking at the computer screens and nothing at all but they are doing some work some serious work right now they are the head manager head or the working team of some the sequences which is Perform, which is being performed due to the countdown and everything is being monitored by these people whatever the checks they want so they have we have the countdown t minus five minutes until the launch so this is the cargo resupply mission to the yeah turn key to the launch you can down see. to the bike or cosmodrome just inside five minutes until launch the activation of uh, recorders in the launch control center have been completed. Telemetry from the launch vehicle is being received. Everything is in good shape down at Baikonur. We're coming up on uh, the purging of uh, fuel lines and other elements of the rocket engines to fireproof them by removing vapors of fuel and oxidizer. This feed now uh, that you're seeing uh, of the progress on the launch pad courtesy of Roscosmos as we are approaching the four minute mark.
so he, there yeah here you had the view of the beautiful rocket and the we don't have the audio right now but what wh what is this with the the white fumes coming from the rocket what is with the, all that this is the animation which will happen and uh, after you lost the feed or you can't see the rocket properly that will be this so uh -huh. what was i t uh, telling you about the fumes okay, anyone what you're guesses? seeing here is uh, the what graphic the view fumes? of uh, the Why soyuz 2.1a booster on the launch pad this uh, is generated by real-time telemetry being received at the russian mission control center in Koryov as we approach the three minute mark until launch yes, guys Okay, I'm, I think, okay then, if I get the feed right now again, then I'll explain you what is up with that. Yes, Ken, that's the, you are very close to that. That is, the, the fumes are of the oxygen also, but you are very close. I'll, I'll tell you what exactly it, it is. One now standing by for fuel and oxidizer uh, tanks to be pressurized. Uh, this will optimize the fuel flow uh, to the uh, right various stages the on the Soyuz 2.1A uh, booster and to provide structural rigidity to the launch the vehicle. Tanks. Now just two minutes until launch. Two minutes, so yeah. I can see the heartbeat rising and same would be with these people. So guys, one more thing is there, uh, NASA, whatever mission it had to do, uh, the launching of the astronauts, it was unable to do from its own American soil from the last 30 years, 30 years or so, just because they had retired the space shuttle thing. You must be you must not be hearing about the space shuttle for a while, the launch and all, because it has retired. It had very much what we say faults in it, so it retired. Whatever the launching happened after that happened from the Russian soil in the Soyuz capsule. So the historic one thing is happening in, on May 27 from the Demo 2 mission, which will be done by the SpaceX. And demo to, on Demo 2 mission, there will be the astronauts launched from the American And now about a minute away from launch, by you see uh, the progress on Not the launch NASA, pad, by fully fueled. So the drop Drainage uh, but we can't has see been the uh, completed. Here, so let me tell you there about are two the uh, umbilical towers that are buttressed up against the side of the Soyuz 2.1A. The first uh, should be retracting momentarily. Yeah, the fumes are actually the, they, uh, they come, they originate from the bleeding valves. So what happens, you know, the, the fuel which is uh, injected in it is on very low temperature, okay? So when it comes down to surrounding temperature, it starts coming down to static surrounding temperature, the liquid fuel, the, the kerosene and the oxygen, they vaporize. When they vaporize, they create pressure inside the tank. When the pressure becomes standing very by for the uh, launch command, the bleeding wells help in uh, releasing that pressure, and that's why those fumes are there. And the first of uh, the umbilicals now retracting. First, to, the, yeah, this thing is retracting now, and we are very close to the launch. Once the uh, second umbilical retracts, that will initiate the uh, launch command for main engine start. These, this white there goes thing, the second umbilical. This white thing you see, this we have a go for main engine start. Rocket. We have main engine start. So we, okay, cool. Turbo pumps now coming up to flight speed. 20 seconds before the recovery. And liftoff. We have a lift Liftoff off. of lift the off. 75th Progress resupply ship on a fast track two orbit flight to the International Space Station. So Roll we pitch and yaw program are in. The Soyuz 2.1A booster arcing out to the northeast from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. So 
so here we have the feed so beautiful, so beautiful. all parameters are reported to be normal everything normal right now the International Space Station is now flying directly over the Baikonur Cosmodrome. Okay, the launch window and that's why they launch at this time. The uh, Soyuz uh, now moving through the period of uh, maximum dynamic pressure. So this is called going Max supersonic two. as it heads downrange. You can see the beams also. The Soyuz traveling at uh, 2,500 miles an hour, some 15 miles in altitude now, 10 miles downrange from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. The first event which will occur will be the first day separation, and you will see a beautiful Korolev cross. I must have missed now the name, but yeah, that cross which you will see after the first day separation. Has All parameters been. are reported to be normal by the engineers of the blockhouse in Baikonur as we stand by for first stage shutdown and separation. We'll have the, you will be able to see this cross. And we have first stage shutdown. And the shutdown is done. Except Second the, stage engines up and running in good shape. Okay, we were unable to see that. Okay, cool, no problem. That's a beautiful cross which we. The flight is reported to be proceeding in nominal fashion. Sometimes we are able to see, sometimes we aren't. So, okay, no problem. So yeah, the second. Good structural stage is, parameters being reported. The Soyuz. Uh, Second stage is guiding uh, the Progress resupply ship on a precise path to its preliminary orbit. Preliminary and we orbit uh, have reports of launch route jettison. A little bit, the altitude of that is a little bit less than, uh, the, uh, I, than that of ISS. All the vehicle uh, parameters are in good shape. Good engine performance from the second stage engines. Everything good. And now they must switch to, yeah. And this view from a camera on the upper on stage camera. of the uh, Soyuz 2.1A. So These must be the... The uh, Soyuz traveling now at about 7,300 miles an hour. Actually, it has to achieve... 81 miles in altitude, 190 miles downrange from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. That's the speed which it has to achieve to gain a, a orbital speed. Otherwise, it will fall back to Earth. At that speed, that is around 7.2 kilometer is the orbital the uh, second stage engine continues to function normally all good structural parameters being reported guys if you are new to the stream like it and subscribe to this channel for more upcoming launches and more videos on space and science These must be the solar arrays. I, okay. Yeah, here you can see the plume. Something coming out of the rocket. That is the plume. Okay, that was the... Uh -huh. And we're standing by for a second stage shutdown and separation. That was something like parachute, right? It was so interesting to watch. That is actually a thing which does not happen normally i guess we, we will have to wait from the for the confirmation how a parachute opens in between a flight I don't all know. Uh, good uh, reports coming in from the blockhouse at baikonur good structural parameters being reported that must be not a parachute then must be something else i don't know Maybe. The problem with the the stream from the uh, Roscosmos, the Russian Space Agency, and the Soyuz, for the Soyuz is that 
They don't have the proper parameters. Flight continues uh, to proceed in nominal fashion. Display, which, we, which, we, which we as a space enthusiast gets excited of. You are pitch and roll. Good uh, reports coming in from Baikonur as the Soyuz continues to do its job. Well over halfway through its ascent uh, to place the progress on a path to the International Space Station. So basically now the rocket is, the second stage is being lighted up. Third stage, uh, third stage engine performance up and running in good shape okay, as we the cross the seven is. minute mark into the flight. <laughs> About uh, one minute and 40 seconds, seconds of powered flight remaining. Okay, cool. This is the thing. Uh, there we have the International Space Station. Here as you can see, this thing. This is the International Space Station. Oh yeah, Look, this cool animation I was waiting animation for. Animation now so uh, being time. generated by real-time telemetry uh, from the Soyuz 2.1A booster. As we're about a minute and 15 seconds away from third stage shutdown and spacecraft separation. So spacecraft will be separating soon. The uh, Soyuz booster traveling almost 13,000 miles an hour, 122 miles in altitude, more than 600 miles downrange from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. Third stage engine continues uh, to burn in perfect fashion as we cross the eight minute mark. These are the solar arrays only, yeah. And everything is looking good right now. Good stable vehicle being reported. As soon as uh, the uh, progress separates from the third stage, control of the flight of the progress will uh, revert back to the Russian Mission Control Center in Koryov outside of Moscow. Okay. Cool. We're standing by now for third stage shutdown and spacecraft separation. Soon there will be shutdown. Yeah, there's a shutdown. And the separation. And we have third stage shutdown. So and separation. separation. So beautiful separation, right? Next event will be the deployment of the Progress's solar arrays and navigational so antennas. So and you see that function now in work. <laughs> so beautiful, right? And all of uh, the appendages have now been deployed, the solar rays and the navigational antenna and the TV boom on the progress, a perfect launch and a perfect ride to its preliminary it orbit. Launch occurring at 8.51 and 41 seconds PM Central Time, 9.51.41 Eastern Time, a good ride uphill on the Soyuz 2.1A booster. And so the progress chase is now on to reach the International Space Station with docking scheduled at 12.12 12 a.m. Central Time, 1.12 a.m. Eastern Time. You must have heard the timing of the docking. I won't be streaming for that, but yeah, I'll see, I'll make you listen. Yeah, Ken, thank you for subscribing and liking, and yeah, the launch was so perfect and so And perfect. so, uh, about an hour or so after sunrise at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, the Soyuz 2.1A booster took flight, delivering the Progress resupply vehicle, the 75th Progress resupply ship, to a perfect orbit, a preliminary orbit, a series of engine firings, pre-programmed engine burns. Now we'll raise the Progress's orbit and put it on a path to reach the International Space Station. There's our first view through the Progress's external television camera. It helped, it All of the Progress's you know, systems are in excellent shape. The, the Progress carrying 2.78 tons of food, fuel, and supplies for the residents of the International Space Station. We will be back on the air at 11.30 p.m. Central Time 
12.30 a.m. Eastern Time with our rendezvous and docking coverage. Docking scheduled again at 12.12 a.m. Central, 1.12 a.m. Eastern Time on Saturday morning. So be back with us in a couple of hours and rejoin our coverage at that time. Until then, this is Mission Control Houston. So guys, we had the launch, so beautiful launch and such a perfect launch. There was some glitch which happened. I don't know what was that. And Okay, so wait a sec. So, guys, now I'll be streaming the. Everything is thanks, Bob. <clears throat> Subscribe for more, and now I'll just make you see the thing which will happen. With now, uh, do you see the video? Open space program, it is being loaded in the background. So, for the slow load this actually happens with the service space program it's uh, such it is not a heavy heavy game but there are so many things which needs to be loaded it's not as a big file but as small small files that's why it takes times my voice too with the with the whatever happening at the background the music is happening if you hear it tell me if you can hear my voice clearly or should I just have to increase or decrease the music for you background music anyone okay let's start the game. So basically this is a Kerbal Space Program, actually what is this? This is actually a game in which you run your own, uh, what you say, space program, right? Uh, the thing is, we, yeah, the like in, we have NASA, Roscosmos, SpaceX, those things uh, you can make your own, okay? This is that thing. So let me just walk to the morning so you can better see it okay let me just put down the volume then Thanks, can. now now is it good These are some mods which I have used, that's why the screen is like this. So, here's the launch vehicle. It was like this only, right? These were the strap on boosters, and there we have the engine central code, the first stage, and the, this is the resupply Soyuz capsule. Okay, so we should launch it now and try to dock it with the International Space Station which is heading above.
so i'll explain you whatever the things which actually they plan in the mission design and uh, hopefully i'll be able to explain you more clearly now so guys this is the rocket which we have and we don't have the <laughs> what you say the white fumes coming out of it not the launch no we don't have the launch tower too whatever accuracy i could achieve i have achieved from this okay so this is the rocket and now let's just see this thing yeah here we this is the space in the iss okay this is iss and this is the kerbal space center this, this is this is the space center so when right now we don't have the launch window so when actually we have the launch window we have the launch window when this space station after completing the orbit comes directly above this thing okay when it comes directly above this thing then we have the launch window and then we launch uh, this thing actually happened in this this launch also the Soyuz launch where you also heard the commentator saying that the ISS is heading above the the launch station right now that was the thing that is the thing which actually happens so how does it facilitate what actually happens whatever th are the things this will be seen okay so let's just do it let me time warp it so that you don't have to wait so much so that it current it comes directly above the oh oh okay no problem my bad do it once again and yeah looking good this will work so yeah here we have this vehicle and SAS enabled SAS is nothing but space as uh, sorry stability assist system and we have then okay let's have the countdown first we have must have the feeling for the countdown right 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 0 and we have the launch to the international space station we have a lift up and this is going to the international space station so now it will pitch so guys directly you you must be thinking one thing that um, the this rocket just goes directly above and then it catches with international space no 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 it does not work like that it basically what basically goes towards the east okay and uh, it will head towards the it will pitch towards the east so that uh, it can match the orbital wings velocity with that of the earth why is it going towards the east only not any other direction it can go any other direction too but because the earth okay, rotates in the east so it actually gets a horizontal velocity and which does not which it does not have to uh, okay 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 and it flipped over That's the thing which uh, the engineers have to take care of. That's why we say whenever uh, anything is not uh, easy, we say it is rocket science. That actually is this because of this. So we have to again arrange the this. Uh, uh, uh. Again it went uh, forward. cool so hopefully now we'll be able to do it more clear clean more clearly and cleanly so here we go ja <laughs> no 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 it is a 
Kerbal Space Center. It's not actually this is the carbon. It's not actually Earth. This is the game analog of the Earth. And this from the picture you will be able to see it. It is it actually looks like uh, Africa. Okay. So basically, this is the picture. This is the Earth picture, which uh, uh, the world map, which you can see, is uh, of when the continent. Let's just head to the International Space Station. I'll now pitch. Uh, I'll now have a pitch maneuver after it reaches some height because I've seen it just flips over, so it is now not uh, much stable. So when it reaches some thin atmosphere, I'll just pitch over an extreme pitch. And it is approaching a thin atmosphere right now, and I must pitch over. But I should. Oh, okay. This is the thing. And now we have the stage. We'll have the stage separation. Here we have. This is was the cross which I was talking about. Okay. For every group or cross, that is the. And the second stage is going well. Now we have seen. We are not not just heading above. We are going sideways. Okay, this is necessary. If we just go above, we will fall back again. Okay, but do not fall fall back again. We have to go sideways, and that is necessary. So 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 much necessary. And why are we going sideways? So this why don't we fall again to the earth when we? Of certain about certain will speed. I'll show that to you once some this stage depletes. I'll show that to you. And I should set it as a target. And yeah, fairing just isn't. These are the things which actually takes place. Let me just have a perfect maneuver, right? Okay, cool. I haven't still got a touchdown. Let me just. Okay. Uh oh. What is the app apps? Okay, no problem. I'm able to manage it. Uh, you have to do some correction maneuver too. No, 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 not pop. Don't pop, please. Okay, cool. Start burn in 18 seconds. Maybe I'll be able to do it. This is the third stage, guys. You can see. Then this is the capsule, and these are the solar arrays which will be deploying soon. Okay, cool. Achieve the orbit. Cool. The thing. Ha! Huh. Now we'll fine tune it more correctly. So here we have. Here's the situation right now. So now I haven't done it more accurately, but what happens? Yeah, it launches into a orbit, which it actually coincides with that with the space station's orbit. This is the space station which is going and it is ahead of us. 
so to catch it up first of all we need to change our inclination so that it matches the matches that of space stations the orbit matches that of space station so guys um here this is the sending node on ascending node we perform a descent maneuver so that it now yeah when it just flips around we stop it okay is it okay no minus 0.4 minus 0.3 and yeah now it must incline the yeah it will be inclined when we'll perform that burn it will make that inclination we must have changed the speed also so that it matches that of when we let me see what happens trying to do something it actually happened during a non lift it is actually behind so i must be in a lower orbit actually when in, in a lower orbit na you go more fast and that's why we'll be able to catch this up so i need to Let's do this, guys. We'll save it, and if something bad happens, we'll do that. So I'm forcing the maneuver. This does not happen. I'm just doing it because otherwise the stream would be very boring. So that's me. I'm in line, and I should be okay. We are getting a good encounter there. Just. Yeah, the deployment of the solar arrays. I forgot about that. <laughs> um, we'll do that in a second. such a beautiful view right <laughs> is the docking port let's move to that now. Cool. so let's just time warp it and this is how actually will actually happen in the but uh, the, that would be more accurate than this i am a very much amateur player not a not a more and not a beginner but still learning a lot of things we all we are always a learner right so no problem with that let's just go trying to catch up with the space station i perform a 368 meter delta v required
nice day. Cool. This is good. Now we'll point towards the anti-target. Ah, I don't have the markers. I have to do it manually first. So we'll have this, and then we'll go to the retrograde so that the relative velocity can burn up. So now what will happen? It will go above. It was behind. I should have theoretically. Uh, made it made the uh, the orbit small for more efficient thing but here i am forcing it okay so that's why i did a bigger one so what will happen now the this space station will perform two orbits and i'll perform one orbit and we will both meet here okay that's the thing so let's just go we time warp it here we'll be able to see they see We are here. Oh, that's a lot of. I have to bleed off 370 meter. I have to bleed. Yeah, I'll do that. This basically I'm doing this is the retrograde marker is the marker uh, it is uh, I'm late I'm late I'm late no please this is a space station <laughs> okay no problem I'll catch it up once catch it up again I should have started it a bit earlier this is basically retrograde is nothing but uh huh why, 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 why is it happening? Come on, man, bleed off the velocity and head towards the target. Yes, you are doing good. I'll explain what I'm doing. Wait a second. talking about retrograde retrograde is nothing but a direction where you where you are heading okay it is a it is opposite to that so that you can fire up the engines opposite to that okay. and slow yourself down it will like a break so i'm trying to dock it with the space station and the simple thing which I am doing is just bleeding off my velocity and then uh, moving towards the target. And 
then again bleeding of my blood you see this is this does not happen in real life in real life the all maneuvers are perfect and thing but here as a lazy person you know you don't have to grab so much of my okay here we can see the space station station and now we will be doored out we will just move down the velocity and, and have it towards the sun let me see if it can do that no please don't do this please don't do this to me please yeah let's just go on that Is enabled. And where's the target? Here we are towards the target. And I'll do a uh, one thing. Switch it. Control from here. see it more clearly what the hell is happening man to control from here and this is the towards the target please what the hell man anti target anti target don't do anything man just but I'll do myself <laughs> I'll do myself Okay, no problem. I'll do this. So here, there we have to. This is the docking port. This is the space station, and we here we have to dock. Okay. So let's just perform the maneuver. Go perpendicular. And RCS. That's why it is so boring. You know? This only the little so boring. Tell me you will be able to talk.
Shabbat. Dog, dog, uh, okay. Ah, junior dog import. You want dog, dog here? This is a small dog import. These two dogs in here. Do I have a small dog import here? <laughs> so color I raise man. Wait a sec. I'll do it. I need to just turn off it off and this. Done. Now I'll just head towards it. Come on man, head towards it. Please, dog. Yeah, docking confirmed. And here we have the docking. So this is how it hap will happen in the space station. Okay. This will all happen in the space station, guys. Here I docked it. This is the Soyuz capsule which docked. Okay. And this is the International Space Station. And the Swiss capsule, the dog here, okay? Such a beautiful view, right? So now, uh, after that, what will happen? The crew on board the International Space Station uh, will come here, open the hatch, take all the supplies here, from here, and this thing will remain uh, attached to this for 210 days, okay? After 210 days, what they, they will do is they will after they will all they will take away all the things which came from it now only but after 210 days they will pack this again with all the garbage and the stuff which they don't need on the international space station and after that the this thing will be uh, released in the atmosphere to deorbit will be released from the international space station and it will deorbit deorbiting means it will reduce its orbital speed and re-enter the atmosphere and burn it burn up in the atmosphere okay that's whole thing that will happen so guys uh, do you want me to see um everything is good now 
let's just uh, undock it once uh, if i can refuel it mm, 172 meters per second would be enough i think ah that would be enough okay so i'll undock it and maybe i'll be able to show you how it will re-enter the atmosphere okay so time warping it fast at to 210 days okay let's just go undock undock here we are undocked and let's just SAS on and move away from it RCS on come on man what the hell man RCS is on what I don't have monopropellant or what oh what the hell Let's just see if I'll be able to deorbit it. I don't think so. I'll be able. To, uh, okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. It is separating. Okay. But still, it will hit more separate. Cool. Now I'll deorbit it. I think so I'll have enough fuel to deorbit it and then we'll see what will happen deorbit maneuver starting thirty four meters perhaps twenty five would be good okay this is good. So now it will it is re-entering the atmosphere, okay? There we <laughs> there the space station and now we'll de we have deorbited as you can see it will be hit the atmosphere it will hit the ground and finally uh, atmosphere and finally the ground. And hopefully basically I designed it so that uh, it will survive the re-entry. Maybe let's see what happens and yeah so we uh, let's just enter the atmosphere atmosphere starts here at 70 kilometers and atmosphere is starting started let's just okay yes this will survive so this is the main thing which uh, you know i have designed it so that it will survive it this is the heat shield and in here if something uh, needs to be get back to the earth for research analysis and all that so yeah now you will see there's ex some explosions and heating and all that would be a good view to, oh no please don't hit it please just go away man go away go away yeah go away you don't have any thing right now yeah go away destroy in the atmosphere destroy yourself in the atmosphere as you can see this thing is turning white oh sorry red red I'll just speed up you can see the flames too yes this is actually um, you must be thinking okay that thing exploded 
Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you must be thinking, what man? Now, okay, no problem. Two things were there. Ignore the explosion. So the, you must be thinking, what is this? Right? This, this is this the fire? Or, you must be thinking this is fire, but it is not fire. It is plasma. Actually, when something goes too fast through the atmosphere, na, so it ionizes the air. Okay. So air gets ionized and gets converted into plasma. That's some similar sort of thing happens in the sun. That's why those flames are there in the sun. Okay. And the surface temperature of this here, this is the heat shield actually. Okay. What it does is uh, 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 it just evaporates because of the heat. Okay. And it safeguards the capsule, whatever it is. And we forget to, <laughs> and we forget to include the parachute. Shabash Priyanshu. Very good Priyanshu. But I included some separate rounds and that must will be able to slow us down. Let us see what will happen. So the velocity is decreasing as you can see. It is entering through the atmosphere and uh, it will land somewhere if i'll be able to uh, what we say protect it it would be great and after some time the atmosphere will be so dense it won't be moving so fast and uh, these flames will go out as you can see this is just dimming out and finally it will dim out fully Here we have this is time warp pit. Ah, we are on, we are in above the oceans. No, oh man, <laughs> battery went out. Shit, I won't be able to land it now. I thought I will be able to uh, battery went out I should have learned okay see the explosion then see the crash then what I was planning to do is separate this heat shield and fire up these engines this solid boosters it will slow up down and finally it will end but this is not be happening now enjoy the explosion battery went out Yay! Actually, uh, yeah, the launch uh, is done. The launching is done, and now the docking part will happen. So I, I was trying to simulate that docking part in KSP. I won't be streaming the do docking part because that is too boring. I'll make a video. I'll upload a video on the docking part. Uh, speed it up I'll make a video speed it up and upload it on my channel that's the thing so right now I was doing that uh, okay no problem this happened we should back to the space center so guys now what do you want me to do tell me do should I do another Kerbal launch to some I guess moon tell me what do you want me to do We'll make a uh, orbiter and go to the make a sorry rocket and go to the moon. What do you think? Should I do that or should I end the stream? Comment me and tell me. And if you haven't subscribed and liked till now, do it. Just do it. Do it. Because I'll be uploading many stuff here and you will be missing out many stuff there so guys i think so no response from you i should end the stream here only and uh, maybe no 
I think I should do one launch here. Yeah, yeah, I'm doing that. Yeah, I'm going to the moon. Let's just design a rocket and go to the moon. So this rocket won't be sufficient. मतलब this rocket we won't do. We'll make one. What do you think? We sh should we make one rocket, or should I just do it from my loaded part? Let's just make it. Forget all this. Let's just make it from scratch. Okay, so guys, I'll explain you the rocket uh, building process now. First, we'll have the command board where the astronauts sit and operate all the rocket from inside. This is the command board. I, it should survive the re-entry, so it should have the thermal protection. Here we here goes the heat shield, and after the heat shield uh, thermal protection is done, we should ha be having the parachute. Here we have the parachute, and. Um, we, this is good so forget this flag okay this is the isro flag basically so yeah so um here this is the command port ready we should have some batteries too otherwise we'll run out of power as you as you just saw what happened so i am attaching some batteries here Battery is done. We'll have add some solar panels. Uh, no, I'll add this one. Uh, extending solar panels, which will retract too. Okay. Cool. This is done. Now the antenna. Yep, the antenna. It should be the antenna. How will how we will communicate back to the Earth then? Um. on its place ha huh. so now we'll have uh, we are done with this now we'll design the stage which will land to the moon and come back okay and launch from that so for that first of all we need to separate it okay so for that uh, coupling oh too big too big appropriate size so here we have this thing done now we'll attach some fuel tanks to it now how much delta v is needed how much delta is needed for the moon we must be knowing that right delta v is what delta v is nothing but uh, how much delta v is the change in velocity okay delta v is change in velocity so how much change in velocity is needed so that we reach the moon that's the question and that is very necessary in designing the rockets so here I have the delta V map. Let me see. I just forgot. If I am not wrong, it is around uh, if from the low Earth, low carbon orbit, low carbon orbit, we'll need 860 plus 210, 970, 970 plus 640 is around uh, 1500. 640 2000 2000 ish delta we need it okay cool let's just attach the engine and see how much delta we get do we get from oh this is so much less for the 
leech. This one do. I have to do one more thing. I need to attach this. This will go good. Looking good. Atmospheric. That's why what I was thinking. <laughs> this will happen when the atmospheric thing. Uh, why the delta is so less? I don't know. It here it is showing so much. Ah. Okay, cool. This is enough. This is more than enough. Come on, man. 2,000. Okay, cool. So, to be more sure, I'll attach these two. To be more precise. And offset it inside. And I'll... Now this is the part, this is the part which will land on the moon, okay. So I need to have landing legs attached to it, this will work. So wider the base, more stable will be your ship, that's why I attach these three tanks here, okay. This is good and start, you should start retracted, good. Now this should have be separated. Mm -hmm. Cool. Now we have to make the part which will make which will uh, launch it towards the low carbon orbit. Okay. So. forget about all this I'll have a single stage to all it mm -mm, not this one this one And then this one. So let me attach the engine too and see what. When the hell is this enough? I think so. It is enough. these two this will help in launching it okay because the thrust to weight ratio is very less here and it will help in launching maybe I can have four of these so that we can have a oh where is the coupler decoupler first I should Dish these two holes now. After they deplete out, we should we need to dish them. So yeah, this done. Go this way. And why are you doing that? Yeah, 
cool now we'll do this cool attach some th aerodynamics to it so that it will be stable very small nose cone yes this is done attach a separate drone separate tones separate runs will aid me in getting that cross you know this will light up runs these things okay cool and yeah we are good to go what about the aerodynamic stability yeah how are we good to go then Fins, 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 and now we are good to go. Who is the pilot here launching it? Crew, Valentina Carmen. Okay, now we are going to the moon. Are you ready, Valentina Carmen? Let's just launch it then. Such a good sunshine, such a good weather, and we are going to the moon. I am not doing a polo style here, okay? I am just doing my style here. So, here we have the rocket. And we are going to the moon now. Are you ready, Valentina Carmen? Where is he? Where is she? Where is she? Are you ready? Are you ready? Yeah! Good girl. <laughs> so we are good. Good to go. Let's just uh, count down. Let's just start the countdown. 10, 9, 8, 7, uh, uh, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Have a lift off to the moon. And we'll pitch over to the east as explained earlier so that I am going it I'm doing that right now because it is stable aerodynamically stable I have a time So at Once we reach 15,000 meters, we'll go, we'll reach here, okay? We'll have this marker here. We should have a look at the apoapsis. This is it should be above 70 kilometers. I prefer it to be around uh, 80 kilometers, and I have a reason for it <laughs> because uh, planning the maneuver no takes time, and uh, and that messes sometimes. So yeah, this is the thing which is happening. the beautiful bloom and the aerodynamic effects too no worries everything is shielded and I'll stop my in 
okay cool this is good let me plan the maneuver note i'll achieve 80 km circular orbit this is looking good and this yeah cool so now we'll uh, point it towards the maneuver so guys yes now as you can see it it is going sideways and why it is going sideways and why is it necessary to go sideways and launch it it is because of this thing as you can see if i don't do anything it will just fall off i'll have to be so fast enough here so that this thing increases 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 and go out of the atmosphere too i'll make you see what i'm talking about in a second okay cool so now as you can see i have fired up the engine here it is this thing this marker is going away 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 and it is necessary to once and it there will be a point of time where this will just come out of the atmosphere the planet and the atmosphere to now the staging needs to be done. what Oh man, no, no. <laughs> Please, no, don't tell me this, man. Please. As you can see, one I just messed up the staging, and one engine which one more engine I attached just messed up, and hopefully I'll be. out of the atmosphere cool and it didn't achieve that orbit which was needed but it's okay now this is the moon the moon set we set it as target and we perform a burn when this thing is like this okay around this thing now we'll make up ah maneuver node here we have the encounter with the man and i am not having the free return trajectory maybe 50 kilometers will be good 43 okay this will be good let me just deploy the solar arrays first Uh, every time forget about this thing extend uh yeah here we are with the solar array how do you doing valentina carmen so let's just time warp it to the point where we will launch it okay cool man direct yourself towards the maneuver time warp a little bit more and yeah see as you can see we are increasing our velocity here firing up the engines uh, is increase, increasing the velocity and our apoapsis is rising we need to rise it so so much so that it coincides it uh, coincides with the 
sphere of influence of this moon and we can have a cap so that we can have a capture and then finally we can land on the moon so now it is okay no problem this is good so now we will be escaping this and uh, entering the months months as it the game describe it as months sphere of influence soon now we'll focus the view here as we can see it is not a equatorial plane but we don't need that to nice equatorial one we don't need to do but still okay so yeah now what i am doing is we'll perform a capture burn that was a transfer burn which i did transfer burn here so that it is transferring from uh, earth to this moon and here i'll perform a capture burn cap this this was performed in prograde which we, which is actually pointing towards the direction of where we are going the head is pointing towards the direction where we are going here we will be doing it retrograde so that it uh, so the head will be pointing opposite to the direction of where we are going and uh, we'll slide up the engines and slow us slow ourselves down so that the we get the moon orbital speed and the moon can catch us okay so let's just Where is the moon? There is the moon. We are coming. We are coming. We are coming. We are coming, moon. And every time, no problem. Okay, we we'll land in daylight. No worries. is cool okay so now we have to find the landing spot where do should we land um i think so we should land somewhere here on a flat surface i can land somewhere else also but it would be best if we land on a flat surface and we are landing on the daylight so don't worry Now we are trying to going to land this thing. Three, two, one, crank the engines. If we have no one, it is uh, rough making speed. We are going. We are done with our rough making speed. Do this, I'm worth it. I have this thing here. Hopefully, we'll be able to land it. Okay, let me just save it. Point towards the retrograde. So we'll be able to land it on the moon. 
मैंने चलो की कर लिया यार ओके ओके एक 5000 आई स्टार्ट कर दें या वे एम पी आर लैंडिंग इन द गुड सरफेस क्लीन से सेफ्टी As in, in, as in. Okay, cool. Land now, self, please. Looking, looking good, 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 looking good. Everything is looking good here. gentle touchdown come on man touchdown gently and yeah here we are on the moon landed perfectly So now what we'll do is we are so happy now right we'll just save it and drop this off yeah have your first step on the moon come on man come on girl sorry yeah 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 she is the first in the kerbal history to land on the moon you know the thing so to celebrate this moment we will fly plant the flag here plant flag and here we go so flag first moon landing okay now we have come so far if we don't take the surface sample that would be so bad you know so we'll take the surface sample so to analyze it back into the earth and have some views around she's looking some views around to the moon let's just fly yes yes isn't it good is it this good right mm. So now we should head back to the earth. Uh-huh. We'll take an EVA report too. Although I'm doing this on uh, sandbox mode, so doesn't matter. But still, now we'll board it, and we are ready to go back to the moon. So here uh, we'll. This is the north. This is the east. We need to go there and uh, check. Uh, 
has been over as you can see <laughs> because of that the stage which we lo lost there we can't you can achieve a orbit Wait, I'll have some. I have something in my mind. If that works, that would be so much, so much, so great. Let's just do that. Maneuver. Yes. Go, 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 go. I'll do some daring thing here now. And I know I won't survive that, but still. So you all just go and you come on EVA and have it destroyed and you save yourself. the orbits to this and we'll perform the escape burn through this only and hopefully we'll be able to make it safely Escape, 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 escape. Come on man, please, have fun, now just escape from this, escape, escape, it is going, it is going good, it is going good. battery nahi ho chuki so it will it won't matter push 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 come on come on come on come on come on come on Oh, cool. What am I doing? Okay, cool. We'll have that air walk here. Bye, bye, moon.
guy. Is that an NPC? Can I open it up? No. Hmm, so that is what to do guys. <laughs> Very good. Shabash. Kuch nahi kar sakte, koi dikkat nahi. Chalo, jo bhi hai. If I wouldn't have messed up with the staging, ho jata thik se. So guys, aaj ke liye bhi hum itna hi rakhte hain. That is for today. And hum milenge aapko ek nai video ke saath. जल्द ही हमारे चैनल पे दो एक वीडियो आए दो वीडियो आएंगी विल विल मीट यू विथ टू वीडियोस वन वॉज वन विल बी ऑफ द रॉकेट लैब वन हाउ विल दे विल बी एबल टू कैच द फर्स्ट स्टेज इन द मिड एयर यूजिंग एन हेलीकॉप्टर येस विल बी एबल टू री द फर्स्ट स्टेज विथ द हेलीकॉप्टर एंड द सेकेंड वन इज द विल बी विल बी कमिंग सोन दैट विल बी द डॉकिंग पार्ट ऑफ द सो यूज कैप्सूल विच सो यूज कैप्सूल विच इज going to the international space station so till then stay fit stay safe and stay at homes and always <laughs>